Welcome to BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. And I'm Brett Newcomb. And this morning we're going to be talking about an article that was recently published in April of 2011 in the OBGYN News uh, talking about night sweats and heart disease and what the, what the literature and the scientific research has to say about those things. So it probably would be beneficial if we began by defining a couple of terms, like what, what are the distinctions between night sweats and flushing, because there's mm -hmm. a point that's made about that difference in the article. Uh, and, and also yeah. remember, we're, th th this is talking about postmenopausal women. And estrogen. We're talking about what the effects of estrogen are because women who take estrogen generally don't have flushing or, or night sweats. Okay. So we're talking about estrogen being the hormone that protects us from hot flashes and night sweats, but they made a distinction. And, and that's a replacement that's of estrogen. That's a replacement estrogen. of estrogen okay. after menopause. After menopause. So what they're talking about is Flushing is just that red feeling that where you look like you've been running and it ha happens okay. during the day, at night, anytime, but it's just kind of a, a red flush. All the blood flows to your skin. Usually Does above your body your temperature neck. go up or is it just uh, like, like I used to have a friend like that every not. time she would get stressed out, we were on the debate team together mm -hmm. in, in high school and college, and, and every time that it would get hot and heavy, she would get mottled skin all over her face mm -hmm. and right across a flush across a, mm -hmm. whatever, was a, whatever you could mm -hmm. see of, of her chest. Uh -huh. uh, so I don't know how pervasive it was for her, but would that be a flush? Your skin will feel hotter uh -huh. because all the blood flows to your skin, but your core temperature is not hotter. Okay. So if you took your temperature, it's not hotter. In right. general, there's a few exceptions. Yeah. But in general, when you have blood flow to your skin, your face feels to the touch hotter or your skin that's flushed. Totally irrelevant, but is this the same thing that an alcoholic gets when their face gets all red? Is that a flush? I don't know I mean, that. I know it wouldn't be I, I'm not an expert in alcoholism, and I don't know that. Okay. And I don't want to admit, yeah, let anyone a, yeah, think we don't that I'm go. an expert in that. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. And so uh, all I know is that we've, you know, we've we've read studies, done tests, mm -hmm. and and uh, came up with the conclusion that we're not actually hotter inside. We're just hotter on our on our surface skin surface. temperature of the skin. All right. So that's that is uh, that's a flush. Uh huh. And then they d made a distinction between flushes and night sweats. And night sweats are. At night, you feel hot, you start sweating, you rip your, your covers off or clothes off, walk around the house, whatever, with very few clothes on, and mm -hmm. cool down, get back in bed. Mm -hmm. And they both come from a surge of a hormone from the pituitary called FSH. That's the follicle-stimulating hormone is a hormone that we've talked about before, but it surges in menopausal women to give you both a hot flash or a night sweat. Some people even get anxiety attacks okay, so, okay. with them. So, so help me, what is the difference or the distinction between a hot flash and a night sweat? Well, the hot, the hot flash, you're not sweating. Okay. The night but sweat, you, you're sweating. But you feel hot. But you, you feel You are hot flushed. In both. In both. Okay. And you may be flushed in Because my wife used both. to wake up, when she went through this stuff, She'd wake up in the middle of the night, throw all the covers off. She'd be drenched in sweat, and she would glare at me like I had done something wrong. And then she'd get I up. I can't and, explain the glaring. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't done anything wrong. <laughs> Must have been in her dream. I don't know. But she was she was ticked off at me. Well, she was she was miserable. Yeah, she was really uncomfortable. So the real difference here is the sweating part. Mm -hmm. Because in, in in reality, I really don't find them to be totally different except in this study right they looked at over 6000 dutch women and they did the study to see what would what correlation between hot flashes and or night sweats among the dutch among the dutch <laughs> yeah i know it shouldn't be a different population uh, right. than us but i mean it shouldn't really well, that's where the research was done right. and and they had the data because they've been tracking this cohort of women over about a 20 year period for multiple issues osteoporosis so they was were, the primary primary yeah. issue but they were also looking at heart disease and they were and able they were to sort out flushes. for uh, variances like smoking uh, mm -hmm. or obesity and so they could narrow or or compare subsets that were similar so right. that you could you could track the data in the age cohort for specific subsets over a number of years. And mm -hmm. so if you take this subset of women that aren't obese, that don't smoke over a 20 year period and look at do they have hot flashes and is there a correlation between the flashes and the flushing and coronary disease? Mm -hmm. Because 
a lot of these women, a significant number of these women were dying from heart attacks. Right. And they were trying to track and say, would it be connected to the issue of estrogen replacement? Mm -hmm. If you replace your estrogen, then you don't will have that flushes or night eliminate sleeps. those things? And if mm -hmm. those things are eliminated, are they, are they triggers that lead to heart problems mm -hmm. or are they signs that heart problems exist? Is what they were trying to determine. And, and doctors are always looking for a sign, something simple that they can find out in a history mm -hmm. that they can relate to a risk factor. Mm -hmm. So they were looking for this, the risk for osteoporosis without doing an x-ray. They were looking for a risk of heart disease without doing a cor coronary workup. Mm -hmm. Or what is your future risk? Right. So when they, that, that's just how we do studies. We try to match two groups. Just like you said, non-smoking, non-smoking, non-obese, non-obese, and then look at one factor. And that's what they did here. They looked at, at hot flushes mm -hmm. or hot flushes or hot sweats and flushes during the day. So they divided those two. And usually they're group, grouped together in, in, the, in our studies. We don't usually distinguish. Separate that out. Mm -hmm. So what they found was kind of different than I had always believed. The daytime, the daytime flashes were not related to a higher risk of heart disease, but the night sweats and flushing were related to heart disease. Okay. So those two things were separated in their study, whereas most doctors lump them together. So would you conclude from what you've read of their studies that untreated night flashes are a danger to women? and that they need yes. to consider that as they make good medical decisions. I mean, one of the challenges is always, how do you make good medical decisions? And, and we look at the cost-benefit ratio. What does it cost if you do something? Mm -hmm. And what does it cost if you don't do something? And, and cost is a, is a multifaceted term, whether it's a financial cost, mm -hmm. an emotional cost, a physiological cost, side effect consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we talk about replacing testosterone, there are some side effects that we have to talk about because some women are going to say, oh, I, I don't know that I could deal with that or my husband wouldn't want that or, or what have you. Or can that be managed in some additional mm -hmm. way? And so the same question comes to mind on this issue. And I heard you say a minute ago that, that if these women replaced the lost estrogen, mm -hmm. the hot flashes and the flushes would go away. Right. So people who, so this basically looked at a study where the women were making their own estrogen some way and mm -hmm. didn't have night, night flushes or hot flashes, or they were taking estrogen and they didn't have either of those symptoms. Right. But on the other side, the women that were having the flushes and the night sweats, you, you don't have those if you take supplementation or if you have enough internal estrogen. So the take home message really of this article was that if you wanna save a person from heart disease, if she has a family history of heart disease, one of the ways is to replace estrogen so that the hot flushes go away. And, and what are the different ways or are there different ways that mm -hmm. you can replace estrogen? The de there's many different ways. The, the most common is oral estrogen replacement, and that does work. So it's just a pill that you it's can take. It's just a pill. Mm -hmm. It just has many more side effects, we, and the, it's not my recommendation to take it orally because even though it might help you with your heart, it has more side effects of weight gain, breast swelling, breast tenderness, and a slightly higher risk of um, breast cancer. Okay. And it is... It's just not the preferred method for me because it has, most people don't feel normal on it. If we do non-oral estrogen, which, then we like drop the risk. Creams, injections. Creams, injections, pellets, which is what I prefer, and patches. Mm -hmm. They all decrease the risk of, of or e are equivalent to taking nothing in terms of breast cancer. So, okay. so we're breast not, cancer is a big concern. Yeah, breast cancer is a big concern, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of other things estrogen does for us. Mm -hmm. So in this case, as you have to look at the risks and the benefits. What are the risks? What are the benefits? The benefits of taking a non-oral estrogen mm -hmm. would be that you don't get heart disease in the future. And, and it doesn't mean 100%. And, it means your you risk is lower. And you are no more likely than anyone in the general population or than your genetic risks for getting breast cancer. Right. That's right. So, so if, if you take the non-oral estrogen, mm -hmm. you can constrain one level of risk mm -hmm. without incurring a side effect risk that would be more horrific. That's right. 
That's right. But you, but in some ways, some women don't feel totally normal mm -hmm. on some of these forms, and that's why I choose the pellets because mm -hmm. they usually feel totally normal, like they had their ovaries working again. And the, the so pellets, that's a the, different the, kind the of the major a advantage risk. of the pellets is that the the estrogen is reabsorbed by the body in an on-demand system that's very similar mm -hmm. to natural production. Yes, it's like a reservoir of estradiol mm -hmm. under the skin, in the fat, and it's absorbed as the blood flow goes past it. So when you're exercising and you need more est estradiol, then it goes past faster and picks it up. And estradiol as distinguished from estrone? Estradiol is young women's estrogen. It's what we replace, it's what we should replace mm -hmm. to be the most biologically similar to what we were before menopause. So we want to recreate the same environment as we had when we were premenopausal. So by, by giving somebody estradiol, that's the same hormone we used to make. Now, if we give them estrone, we have, we have a lot of estrone in general when we- Even postmenopausal. Postmenopausally is when we get it. It okay. comes from the adrenal gland and right. it goes up when testosterone goes down. So estrone is, is a non-desirable est estrogen. Mm -hmm. It actually causes weight gain, belly fat. Uh, it causes uh, muddled thinking. And in general, it can increase your risk of breast cancer. So I don't want patients to have estrone. And, and estrone per se, which they have anyway after menopause. Mm -hmm. They make it and it has those issues. Also doesn't affect the coronary heart disease concern. It I didn't mean, address this. Mm -hmm. It didn't address that issue. Okay. It, didn't, it didn't distinguish between one estrogen and another. But from what I understand here, Es well, estrone doesn't stop hot flashes, so I mm -hmm. guess that would that would self eliminate, self -eliminate yeah. that. Right. So estrone after um, menopause, in general, doesn't stop hot flashes. So, so the objective is a multifaceted objective, and one of the things that Kathy talks about constantly, and in the book that we're writing about hormone replacement, testosterone replacement, we talk about a lot, is that the goal is not to uh, create a fountain of youth, as it were, and make you be 22 again. Right. But the goal is to provide your body chemistry with the critical ingredients that it had when you were younger that allow you the opportunity of living a full, healthy, and active life. Quality life. Yeah, you're going to get older and eventually you're going to die, but you don't <laughs> have to get older uh, crippled and uh, incapacitated and uh, non-ambulatory and, and, and not miserable feeling with good. hot flashes. Some and people have hot with, flashes until they're 100. And if, if you're miserable with hot flashes, <laughs> the people around you are miserable yeah, with hot flashes. That's true. So, so yes, we want to eliminate risks of disease. Mm -hmm. That's one reason we want to replace hormones. And we want to make people feel more like their old selves so they can continue to be productive. Mm -hmm. Because we've made lifespans very long now, but no one's really attending to, to lifespans that are quality. It's certainly not for women. Not for women. In, in, in general, some of men's issues are being mm -hmm. attended to, mm -hmm. but in general, women are, you know, always are kind of second in terms of research. So they are not dealing with that very well. That's what I want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Making our lives more productive as we get older, not just living longer. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the whole goal of replacing testosterone and estradiol in a smart fashion. And it's not a smart fashion if I'm increasing your risk of a bunch of diseases. Right. So if you, if you do this, I'm decreasing the risk of heart disease. And with non-oral forms, I am not increasing your risk of breast cancer. And we also find that it decreases your risk of diabetes. There's other studies that show that if mm -hmm. we replace both estradiol and testosterone. And we can, re uh, we can decrease the risk of osteoporosis and inability to walk, you know, lack of muscle strength. We call it sarcopenia. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. So all of those are the things that make us sick mm -hmm. and make us feel old and unable to take care of ourselves. So the final goal is don't ever end up in a nursing home because we've replaced your hormones so that you can live a full life till the end. Mm -hmm. So that's, what we, that's our goal here. And I just wanted to bring this article to light because this is the first article I've read about heart disease and hot flushes and night sweats. Right, to make the connection between the two. And that, this article is from April of 2011, so, so less than a year it's old. So it's recent in terms of medical information. Right. So they, they still don't know exactly why that is, mm -hmm. why the hot flushes cause heart disease, but they suspect that when 
you have a hot flush, you have what they call a sympathetic outflow. Right. Sympathetic outflow is like faster heart rate, faster breathing, fight or flight kind of right. kind of things. So they think that stresses your heart and that causes higher risk for heart disease. So what you were telling me before we started is that when the hot flash comes, there's uh, an FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone spike. Mm -hmm. And a part of that spike goes over to the adrenal system mm -hmm. in the sympathetic nervous system and says alert. Something's alert. going on. Epinephrine so goes your, your body goes on alert and it starts producing the chemicals that, that you need to be able to make an emergency response. Right. But you're asleep and there mm -hmm. isn't an emergency. Mm -hmm. And so then what happens is the, the body temperature changes, you break out in the sweat, and your trying heart's to cool stressed. your system down. Your, heart's your going heart faster. is racing and running, mm -hmm. but for no reason. That's right. And and if you are older and if you are obese and if you have smoked and if you have all these complicating factors then you that complicates the risk that makes the risk much higher because you have other risk factors to add to the night sweats right and and the main point of the article is that if they segregate all of those critical populations out mm -hmm. and just get women who don't have those factors mm -hmm. that among those women there still is a significant correlation between the hot flashes and coronary heart disease that leads to early death Right, and you wouldn't think you'd have a risk, you would except not for think your you hot, would have a except risk. for your night sweats. And so this is one case where the thought about not taking anything because you don't have a defined problem is better than taking something. It's and wrong. what you don't know is <laughs> you're at risk. That's wrong so because it, yes. that's that that would save have saved all these women's lives yes. if they would have replaced their estradiol. Right. So if you have questions about this or about any of the podcasts that we do, you can contact us directly. You can reach Kathy. Oh, at my office at 314-993-0963, or you can go to my website, biobalancehealth.com. And you can always reach me at brettnewcomb.com.